and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two in my Yule Goat series. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and start adding some color to the drawing. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, check out part one in this series where I have some suggestions of what you might want to use to do this drawing. So we're using Infinite Painter for Android and I've sort of got the drawing pretty well refined but I wanted to go ahead and add just a little bit more some refinements. I changed his mitten right there, his hand, and I wanted to go ahead and and sort of uh, work get rid of some of the sketchy lines there so I'm going back on some of the lower layers there and erasing out the sketchy lines and doing a little bit more of some refinements on the toys and the packages that are in Santa's bag there and then I wanted to go ahead and start doing a little bit of a background so I decided to try some of the light wash brushes in water, the watercolor category and the brushes that I'm using are probably not ready for the public just yet but they're going to be coming and I'm a beta tester for Infinite Painter so I'm using uh, all these uh, brushes and we're testing them out to see which ones work the best and which ones have problems and so here I'm kind of adding um, some more watercolor to the background and sort of a salt like look and you can use the the splatter brush there to get a, a look like um, you've thrown salt on it and if you're following along traditionally you can use watercolor paper and just do this effect with uh, real watercolor and real salt but make sure that it's thick paper if you're going to do this with real salt and then I'm using sort of a light blue color just to kind of uh, make some shadows under the goat and Santa and I want it to look like they're sort of in a, a wintry place and that they're uh, maybe it's a little bit of some snow in the background or something so I wanted to go ahead and do that and then I wanted to go ahead and sort of start on the goat and I wanted to get some photo references for him and I decided to make him sort of a brown and white goat just to just because it's cute looking and I like the markings on that one and I went to Pixabay to get some royalty free uh, photos there for reference and I'm just going back and forth in the spray brush categories and the uh, watercolor and also the markers category we've got a new category with these new brushes and I've been really trying out the brush marker for this painting and that's mostly what I used for this painting was the brush marker and I like to use brush markers in traditional media such as Copics or Winsor Newton brands or some of the cheaper brands like the Ohuhu markers and some of those and they'll work really well to do a painting like this. So here I'm just trying to see how the new brush marker works in Infinite Painter. And it kind of gives it a painterly look. It's not exactly like an alcohol marker. So you kind of have to use a combination of things. And I'm using some light tans and some darker browns and um, some yellow ochre colors and then I'm sort of using the uh, spray brush category to blend these in together. Now if you're following along traditionally you can use an alcohol blender and you also kind of want to make these lines a little bit smoother if you're doing this traditionally you'd go ahead and not leave them just uh, put them down real fast and then hit them with an alcohol blender to smooth them out but of course an infinite painter you can wait a little bit there and, and do that then but that's what I'm trying to do is just kind of use uh, sort of the cloud brush or one of the watercolor brushes to kind of give it a smooth look and to try to blend the colors in on the goat and you kind of end up with 
a painterly effect, which you can get with alcohol markers if you're doing this traditionally. Or you can get a totally smooth look if you're doing this traditionally with alcohol markers. It just uh, depends kind of on what markers you're using. The more expensive ones are going to blend smoother. The less expensive ones may not blend quite as much. So it kind of just depends on what you're using. And of course, if you're using water-based markers, you have to use a whole other technique and you can't just uh, blend them in. Some of them will blend in. The Tombow markers are pretty good for blending in, but there's there's certain kinds that will. And if you're just using generic markers, though, you have to use a whole other technique. And so anyway, I'm just kind of working on his nose, giving him a little pink nose there and and just coloring on the inside of his ears, making it a little bit of some pink color there. And because this um, is kind of a brush marker, medium and infinite painter, it actually behaved kind of like that. So sometimes I had to make a separate layer to actually make the marker show up, which, you know, in real life and traditional painting, you would do uh, a paint marker probably to actually make it show up if you wanted to go over another color. So I just went ahead and made new layers in Infinite Painter to get this effect. But it seems to work pretty well. And when I get too many layers, then I collapse them together just to kind of keep the the layer number down and keep my tablet running smoother because on Android there's kind of a limit to how many layers you can have. In Infinite Painter it's set on your uh, device so it changes from device to device on how many layers that you can actually have in Infinite Painter. And I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2 so you can have quite a few layers with it. And then I'm using a little bit of a gray color to paint in his horns, the goat's horns. And I'm just going ahead and using that brush marker and in Infinite Painter again. <clears throat> and I used it pretty much for the whole painting here. But anyway, I went ahead and, and colored in the goat's uh, horns. And then I wanted to go ahead and kind of... Um, put black on Santa's boots here because um, traditionally he wears uh, black boots so I went ahead and and used that for his boots there and um, as you can see it kind of gives it a, a marker look and if you want it to look uh, maybe more transparent you can go in there and adjust the opacity on it if you want it to look more solid, you can turn the opacity up high. And there's all kinds of different things that you can do to tweak your brushes in Infinite Painter. And I like to go ahead and save some of them every now and then. And that's one of the good things about Infinite Painter is that you can go ahead and save them. And that's really nice. And you can put them in your favorites and and just go ahead and use your saved brushes. And you can also upload them to the community website and uh, where people can download them. And that's also in your Infinite Painter app as well. And then here I'm just kind of working on the belt of Santa Claus and, and the trim on his red suit. I wanted to put it, it's usually white, but I wanted to make it a little bit off-white color just so that it would show up um, from the background and not look so washed out or so pale. So I went ahead and used an off-white color. And there's plenty of those kinds of colors um, when you're using alcohol markers, especially in Copics. <clears throat> and that's the thing with Copic markers is that they have lots and lots of colors. And Windsor Newton has a pretty good selection as well, and so does the Blick Studio Markers, but the Copics have the most. They're also the most expensive, but you can refill them. So I would say that if you're going to do alcohol markers, 
and you're serious about it and this is your main medium, then they might in the long run be your best uh, investment is to buy some Copic markers because then you can refill them and you can change the nibs and you can do uh, just do that kind of thing with them. And I think it probably saves you money in the long run that way if you use them all the time. If you're just using them for a hobby, you're better going with um, cheaper markers, I would say. If you're just doing this for like c coloring books or something like that, or it's just an occasional hobby, then you're probably better off going with some of the cheaper brands. And they work close to as well as the Copics. And actually, I can't tell the difference between... Windsor Newton, Blick Studio, and Copic, really. They're about the same uh, quality, as far as I can tell. So here I'm just working on his beard, and I decided to make it a little bit grayish looking. Although, of course, everybody has white beards when they um, draw Santa, but you want to put a little bit of gray in it. And I'm just going ahead and using the spray brushes to blend the hair and the fur and just kind of trying to keep a fuzzy edge there. And I'm just kind of jumping back and forth and trying out all these new brushes that uh, we're working on in Infinite Painter right now. So I'm blending out his beard a little bit, making sure that it uh, looks kind of fuzzy and also along the trim on his cap and the pom-pom on his hat. And also I put some trim on his boots. And you just want to go ahead and kind of uh, smooth that out if you can. And add patches of dark and light on it a little bit to go ahead and make it look like the like there's some texture to the trim that's on his clothes right there. And I'm just kind of working a little bit more on the goat's fur and smoothing it out a little bit on his face and his legs. And just kind of blending the browns together there. And on his back and his tail, just adding a little bit of um, some uh, fur-like te texture. It, it makes it look sort of fur-like when you use this um, brush marker. You can kind of give it a sort of a paint look but it sort of resembles watercolor kind of and you just have to kind of play around with all these new brushes just to see what you're going to end up with and then I wanted to go ahead and <clears throat> add a little bit more of some uh, lighter color on Santa's face there it's kind of a pale peach color just trying to get a a little a uh, little color to his face there and then of course I want to give him some uh, rosy red cheeks too later that will add some color to his face we just kind of want to he's cartoony but you want to add a little bit of some depth to his face there so I'm working on that blending it in with the blending brushes and again I'm mainly using the blending brushes set on the spray brush and then, of course, you need to make his eyebrows the same color as his beard there. Make them a little bit gray. And you want to just go ahead and sort of hunt and, and pick around on your, your painting there to see what needs to be smoothed out and what you want to add. And I wanted to add a little bit of lighter uh, color to the tuft on the goat's head. That just makes it look cuter. And then I wanted to start working on uh, Santa's suit there. And I went back to the brush marker again and just started um, using it. I decided to try another kind of marker, but I didn't like what it was doing for, for this painting. I mean, it works well, I think, if you want to do more of a, a uh, water-based marker look. But for this painting, I wanted the alcohol marker look so I'm working on the the suit and I'm adding a little bit of some red color on his sleeve and on his leg there and mostly his arms are showing there and, and um, his mittens I want to go went ahead and, and gave him 
uh, red mittens. I guess you could give him green mittens if you wanted to, or just leave them white or something. But red looks really good with the painting, I thought. And then I went ahead and did his hat there, um, colored around the edge there where the trim is. And you just kind of want to make it look curved on the edges so that it looks like it's going around his head there. And then I decided to do a green sack because um, it needed a color complement to the red. And red and green are color complements. And color complements are just colors that um, set each other off. They, they make each other show up really good. And it's also colors that are on the opposite of the artist color wheel. And so the green worked really well, I thought, to go ahead and, and show off the, the red suit. I decided that um, I wouldn't make everything look red because that might be sort of monotonous. So I went with a, a darker green color and I, I used the brush marker for that and then I just wanted to go ahead and add a little bit of some lighter color to the sack and that just gives it some depth and texture and makes it look like it's got wrinkles and stuff and if you're doing this traditionally though you either have to use a paint marker or you have to get the light color on first and then go back with the darker color so you have to keep that in mind when you're working traditionally that you have to work from light to dark or you have to use uh, acrylic paint markers and then here I just wanted to make some bright colors for the packages. So I picked some yellow and blue colors there. And so this is the end of part two of my Yule Goat series. And in part three, we're going to go ahead and finish up the painting and add the final inking details and all the colors. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. And thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.